just setting up a demonstration here for creep. Now steel creeps at around 350 degrees or above. Uh, this is uh, electronic solder. Plumbing solder is probably the same. It creeps at room temperature. So what I'm demonstrating here is what happens when you put a uh, solder under a load. As you can see it's quite springy. It's still quite springy if I rock the car. This is on my motor car by the way. It's going to be a rock the car. It's still springy. It still has its springiness. It hasn't melted. But uh, you observe with the passing of time the uh, wire started to collapse. In fact the wire in the foreground I think is already starting to go past the uh, brickwork on the edge of the garage. I can see it starting to uh, see it slowly giving way. Now, if I, I, the first time I did the experiment, I used a much shorter piece of wire, and uh, it took an hour to collapse, which is around uh, the same time it took the twin towers to go down. The wire at the back is a different grade of solder alloy, so even though it's a longer piece of wire, it's actually taking longer to tip over. But uh, as the video runs on, you should see the wire at the back moving towards the brickwork over the garage door. Um, that'll give you the indication that it's creeping. I once did this experiment with a piece of steel and a blowtorch. I put a load on it, enough to bend it. I then removed two thirds of that load so there was only one third of the load left. I aimed a blowtorch at the steel beam and over the course of the next 20 minutes I could see it slowly starting to sag. In fact if you look at steel frame buildings that have been caught in a fire you can see that everything has sagged and drooped. Well. It, the steel hasn't actually melted what's happened is it started to creep and it starts to sag and droop in exactly the same way these pieces of solder are slowly sagging and drooping in front of us right now the piece of solder in front of us is now virtually he's now gone to bent horizontal um, the one at the back is still slowly on the move, but I can see it has passed in front of the garage brickwork. Interesting just to try this experiment with a short piece of wire and come back to it 20 minutes later and find it still standing and think uh, it's, it, nothing is going to come of it. And then you come back next morning and find it's lying over. Cr uh, because uh, solder has a low melting point, it creeps at room temperature and... Uh, demonstrates perfectly without the use of uh, the blowtorch what steel does at elevated temperatures. Those slowly bending wires represent the sagging columns of the twin towers which continued to sag until they'd, they'd sag so much they were unable to take the weight because it's a bit like standing with your knees bent. The more you bend your knees the more difficult it is to stand. As the column started to bend and warp they could take less and less weight until they reached a tipping point and simply gave way and uh, once that happened the uh, the buildings are on their way down yeah I can see the, the the wire that's not the the wire in the foreground is now touching the top of the car the wire in the background is now on its way to horizontal has actually come towards the camera the end of it is I don't know if it's here there's the end of it is there I'm not touching it just there so it's just in the field of view of the camera and it too is on the way down. And if we leave the camera running you'll notice that even though that piece of wire is touching the top of the car the middle of it will continue to sag and uh, continue to droop as the effects of creep take uh, continue to affect it. Now that that piece of wire is horizontal it's behaving like a, a horizontal girder in a building that's affected by fire in that uh, it'll continue to sag and uh, droop under its weight.
you might want to fast forward the video to uh, see the whole thing speeded up. <laughs> 